Hi, this is Graham Helfrich, Technical Advisor Manager for the Engineering Software here at IHS Market. Welcome to the weekly Did You Know episode where we learn how to do something of value that you probably didn't know about your IHS Market engineering software. Today we're going to learn how easy it is to predict the impact that our bubble point or dew point pressure can have on our production forecast. And we're also going to see how this can impact our gas liquid ratios. Now when you think of a changing GOR, CGR, or WOR, you are maybe thinking of multi-phase flow in the reservoir, and you'd be right. These changes in our fluid and gas ratios are often caused by the relative permeability of each fluid as the saturations are changing in the reservoir, etc. Uh, plus, once your well drops below the bubble point or dew point, you can definitely expect some changes to those gas liquid ratios. Now today, I'm going to show you how you can predict this into the future, plus how you can understand the impact of your fluid properties on future production, especially if you have some uncertainty in them. It's all using the fast and easy numerical multi-phase reservoir models in Harmony Enterprise. Here we go. So here I am in Harmony Enterprise. I've got a horizontal multi-frac well set up. My initial pressure is 5,000 pounds. I've got pretty good perm around the SRV at 10 micro darcies, and my matrix perm is 1 micro darcy. Now, in this case, I have my bubble point pressure as 4,000 PSI. And I've done a forecast at a bottom of flowing pressure of 1,500 PSI. So basically, we're going from initial pressure of 5,000 to an instantaneous bottom hole flowing pressure of 1,500 pounds. So at some point, we're going to be dropping through that bubble point, which is 4,000 PSI. Now, this is a 10-year forecast. Uh, I'm not doing any production history matching here. I'm just doing this synthetic case to show you how you can do this. So what are some of the results that we get here? Well, we get our forecast here of our three different fluids. We see our average reservoir pressure right here. And what's interesting is we see our gas oil ratio right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back this line up, which is time. We can kind of see how the pressures and the saturations are changing here in time. And again, I have the bubble point pressure as 4,000 PSI, which is right about this point here. And what we see is the GOR is definitely increasing here. But if we zoom in near the fracks, we actually see the gas saturation already increasing and that solution gas coming out of the oil well before the average reservoir pressure reaches the bubble point. And that's because, again, our drawdown, our flowing pressure is 1,500 pounds. So near the fractures, we're getting early solution gas, and that's why our GOR starts picking up right away. But we can see it really starts to increase. So this is our, our GOR profile as our gas saturation is increasing here, right? So this is one case. This is 4,000 pounds bubble point pressure. Now I've duplicated this case, but all I've changed is I've lowered the bubble point pressure to 3,000 pounds. And you can do that in the editors. You just change it right here. And all the PVT correlations will update to adjust to that new input bubble point pressure. So what does this forecast look like? OK, so let's look through time again here. So in this case, our bubble frame pressure is 3,000 pounds. So I'm going to look at the average reservoir pressure here. And in this case, we see that the GOR actually took off quite a bit earlier, well before our average reservoir pressure reached the bubble point pressure. And again, that's to be expected because the drawdown near the fractures is only 1,500 pounds, which causes that solution gas to jump out of the oil well before the average reservoir pressure, which is just a material balance calculation of the entire reservoir. So let's compare these. Let's compare 3,000 versus 4,000 pounds bubble point pressure on the forecasts. So I sent these over to the comparison plot in Harmony. And what we see is the 4,000 pound bubble point pressure has a much higher GOR, which is probably what we would expect. We basically go through that bubble point pressure earlier. And so we see that, but it's a much more intense GOR compared to the well with the lower bubble point pressure. We can kind of think of this 3,000 pound as a more dead oil 
Okay, so this is nice to see this is kind of what we would expect. What about comparing the rate forecast? Okay, so the thick line is the oil rate, 10 year oil production forecast with 3000 pound bubble point pressure. And this oil forecast is higher than the same well, but with a 4,000 pound bubble point pressure. We're gonna look at this for a second. I had to think about this when I looked at it and we're gonna talk about why this could be, all right? So again, the well with the lower bubble point pressure is giving us a higher oil rate. Let's look at this on a QM plot. So again, lower bubble point pressure is giving us a higher 10 year QM by about 35,000 barrels. Now the gas production is much higher for the well with the higher bubble point pressure, meaning we're gonna get that gas production much earlier, more intensely compared to the 3000 bubble point pressure well, which has a lower gas production. Okay, but let's think about some different reasons why the oil forecast may be higher for our well with the lower bubble point pressure. Well, one of the reasons is the oil formation volume factor. So here's our formation volume factor for each bubble point pressure, 4,000 and 3,000 PSI. So we can think about this as our pressure increases in the reservoir, the oil can hold more and more gas, and the oil is actually swelling at this point. And so it keeps absorbing more gas until it becomes saturated, and then the oil will actually start compressing as the pressure increases. In comparison, this is our saturation pressure or bubble point pressure here for this input and then the oil is compressed in here. So we can think about it as we're reducing our pressure with the oil, it's shrinking. And the shrinkage factor is one of the reasons why the 4,000 pound bubble point forecast has a lower oil forecast by the time that oil reaches the sand face. Another element is the gas saturations, okay? So this is the gas saturation in each case after one year of production. And for the well with the high bubble point pressure, 4,000 pounds, we have high gas saturation near the completion, about 18% after one year. So this is where we reach that bubble point earlier, sooner, it's more intense, we get more gas, so the saturation is higher. In comparison, with the lower bubble point pressure, we're only at about 12% gas saturation. And what, why does this impact our oil production? Well, one of the reasons it has to do with the rel perm curves. So if we open up the rel perm curves in harmony for oil and gas, initially we start at 0% gas saturation, but as that gas saturation climbs up, we follow this curve down for our rel perm of oil. So basically with higher gas saturations, it's more difficult for that oil to move through the rock. So that's why with the higher bubble point pressure, it can be more difficult for that oil to flow and why the production rate can be lower. There's actually a lot of reasons why changing the bubble point pressure can impact our production rate. I've just talked about a few of them, but the nice thing is you can go into here and you can use these correlations like I'm using here to change the bubble point and see how the PVT will change based on a correlation. Or if you do have measured PVT, check out episode number 17 to see how you can apply that to your reservoir model in Harmony Enterprise. Now, if you really want to separate each component to see how each of these variables impacts your forecast for the well, you can customize all of these to be constant and then you can kind of remove that factor from your forecast and see how it would change. Now, this was a synthetic case. I call it a test design, but what about history matching? Well, absolutely, yes. So this works for both test design and history matching. If you have a well on production, you have production history and you still have uncertainty about these fluid properties, you can do exactly what I've done here where you adjust an input to the fluid properties. You can adjust your history match and then do a forecast to see what impact that has. Now, if you're producing gas condensate wells and you're th thinking, Graham, you forgot about us. Thanks for hanging on. I'll show you how that works. So in the fluid property editor under gas, we're going to change this to liquid rich and you can use the Ovalier correlation. You can put in your dew point pressure here, your API, your CGR, and this will predict how your CGR will change and your condensate will drop out of the gas in the reservoir. Okay, so at the end of the day, what does this really mean for you? Well, we just saw what a big difference a thousand pounds in our bubble point pressure can have on our forecast. So if you have any uncertainty about your fluid properties, now you're able to determine the impact of that on your well performance into the future. Next, what this means for you is 
If there's a specialist at your office who is using a really expensive and complicated reservoir simulator that probably takes weeks to set up and run, now you can use the fast numerical multi-phase reservoir models in Harmony for any engineer to investigate the impact of fluid property uncertainty on how your well is going to perform. And that's it. Thank you for your time. If you have any questions, please give me a call or email and subscribe to be notified of next week's Did You Know episode.